Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to R software. You may kindly recall that in the earlier lecture we started a discussion on vector indexing and we learned different ways of manipulating the index of a vector which is giving us an information about the position of an element in the vector and using those index values and using the logical operators we had created different types of data sets. Now, we will continue on the same topic of indexing a vector or how to play with the index of a vector and we try to learn some more elementary concepts. So, now here I am trying to now deal with a, a string vector. What is a string vector? A string is a something like an alphabets, characters. So, now I am trying to play with the index of a vector whose entries are something like alphabets. But now you have to see, I have used a wrong terminology. Usually when we call vectors or matrix, their entries are in general some numbers. Now I am saying characters. So, we had done a couple of lectures back that these things can be done using the list command. In the list, we can have all sorts of data objects, character, numbers, matrices and, and say anything. So, now I am trying to introduce here a command, what is called here as names. And using this names, we can access the vector elements. For example, suppose in a class, there are three students sitting at first position, second position and third position. And suppose their names are student 1, student 2 and student 3. Now, how our teacher will call them? They will simply say, student number 2, please come. What is really happening? If you try to analyze, we are simply calling a student by his name. And the name of the student to whom I call is student 2. This is a similar concept in R programming also that whenever we are trying to arrange these characters or say numbers or say anything in a particular order, then these things can be arranged through the command list and we want to call a particular element or a particular value by its name inside the program. So, the question is how to do it. That is what we are going to learn in this lecture uh, by taking certain examples. So, first of all, what we have to understand that all the elements of a vector, they can be named. What does this mean? You may recall that when you went to your schools and colleges, your parents had given you a name. But inside your college, you were given a new name. What was the new name? Your roll number. And as soon as you say your roll number, your unique identity is established. So, similarly, whenever we are trying to deal with the vector elements, all the elements can be given a unique name. And now using those names, we can access say any element of that vector. So, how to do it? Let us try to see here. Suppose I try to create here a list. Since this is a list, so it can have 
each and everything numbers or say alphabets or say anything else. So, I try to take here three elements, element number one, element number two and element number here three. So, you can see here the first value here is a a1 equal to 1. That means the value here is 1, but I am trying to give it a name a1 and I would call this value a1 from here 1. The second value is a character here c and I am giving this c a name say a2 and my third entry is this is a sequence of numbers 1, 2 and 3 and this I am giving a name A3 and this will create a list and if I try to enter here the values of here Z, I get here this thing, this is my first value, this is my second value and this is my here third value. And these values are characterized by the names. This is the name of first value, this is the name of second value and this is the name of third value. Now the question comes why this name is important? Why can't we call a value by its numerical value or say its face value? Now please try to look at this example very carefully. Suppose my objective is call 1. Now you can see here there are two places where we have 1. One place is here, here we have 1 and this is another place where we have 1. So now the confusion is which one do I call or out of these two which is the one to whom I am calling? This situation is very similar to a situation inside the class where there are two students with the same name and when the teacher calls them by their name, both the students comes, but the teacher wants any particular student to come. So that is why they have been given a name which is their roll number. And just by calling the roll number, say roll number 5 and roll number 10, they may have the same names, but I am trying to identify them by a different name and when I say roll number 5, only the student with roll number 5 will come. That is the concept here which we are trying to discuss. Okay. Now once I have created this list, I would like to know what are their names or in some other language I can say, suppose you have got a list and you want to know what are the names which are given to all the elements. Then I can use here a command names and inside the bracket I will try to write down the variable name which can be anything here in our case this is here z. So and we get here an output like this one a1, a2 and a3. And these a1, a2 and a3, these are the same thing, same name which we have given here, here and say here, right. Let us try to do it on the R console and try to see what do we obtain here. So you see here I have created the list, same list with the names A1, A2 and A3. right? And suppose I want to know what are the names in this list Z, I simply have to type here names and I get here the outcome. So now let us try to see what happens next and before that I have given here a screenshot of whatever we have done. Now, suppose I have created this list and also I have given the names. 
Now the question is this, suppose I want to change the name of someone, then how to get it done and is it really possible? Answer is yes, this is possible. But what is the command for that thing? Suppose in the list that we have just created called as here say Z, which is given here, this is my here name first, A2 is my name 2 and A3 is my here name 3. And suppose I want to change the name of third element A3, then how to get it done? So, the syntax here is that you try to call a particular name by the command names all in small letters. Inside the brackets, you try to write down the name of the variable that is containing the list and then use square brackets and try to write down here the position, the address of the element which you want to call. And here I am trying to write down here 3, that means I want to call the third element. And now I am trying to give the third element a new name say C2. And after that if you try to see the value of here Z, the first name remains as, as such, second name remains as, as such A1 and A2, but the third name which was earlier A3, this is now here changed as say here C2. But one thing what you have to keep in mind, the values are not changing, I am changing only the name. That is something like inside the class if a teacher announces that from tomorrow the student whose name is Kode say this Ram will be called a Sham from tomorrow. But the person will remain the same. The marks obtained by either Ram or Sham they will remain the same. So the same thing is happening here. If you try to see here this output or the values they are the same as which are given over here 1, 2, 3. Let us try to do it over the R console and see what do we get here. So I am trying to create here this list, you can see here it has got three names. And now I am trying to change here the name here C2, names here C2. Now, if I try to write down here, what, what is the value of here Z? You can see here that earlier it was A3, which I have highlighted on the screen. And now it becomes C2, which I have highlighted on the screen. And suppose I want that the second name may also be changed and suppose I say the name of second and third position value should be the same. So I can do here the same thing that I can now change the value at the second position and call it here say C2. And suppose I also want to change the name of the first position and let me call it say I want to keep the name Shalab, my name. Now if you try to see what you get when you press here Z, first name becomes Shalab, my name, second name C2 and third name C2, right. Now let us come back to our slides. And now in the next slide, I have given the screenshot of the outcome that you can see over here. Now I try to uh, take here one more example and try to see what we learn from here. Suppose I try to create here a vector by here C, not by list, remember. 
I try to give it here three values, say one, two, and say here three. And I give this a name. I give water for value one, the name juice for value two, and say lemonade for the value three. Now, suppose somebody has given me the vector x and if I want to know what are the names given to each of the element, so I try to use here the same command here, names of x and as soon as you press enter, you will get here the same outcome, water, juice and lemonade. This is the name of the first position value, juice is the name of the second position value which is at the second position also and lemonade is at the third position and this is the name of the third value, right. Before we try to do the same example over the R console, let us try to see what do we get here. Now suppose I try to take another question. Suppose someone has given me a vector and I know that there is some name as juice. But I want to know what is the value of this name juice. So what I try to do here is the following. So first my question is this, I know the vector. I know the name. What I do not know is this, I do not know the value of the name, value of a given name. Suppose I want to know what is the value which the name juice is taking. So I can write down here as a follows, write down the variable name, see here x and since this is a name, this is not a number, so I try to write down the name inside this double quotes and I try to write down here the name juice and as soon as you enter it will let me know the name is juice and its value here is 2. Let us try to do the same thing over the R console and see what do we get here. So you can see here this is my here vector x containing three names water, juice and lemonade and their value is 1, 2 and 3, right. And suppose I do the following, suppose I try to find out their names, names of x, this comes here only water, juice and lemonade and suppose I want to find out what is the value of the name juice in the vector x, this comes out to be 2. Suppose I try to give it here a different name, for example, I can say 30, lemonade to be 30, juice to be 20 and water to be 10 and then let us try to see what happens. You can see here names is here, water, juice, lemonade same. But what is the value of here juice? This comes out to be here 20. Because if you try to see here the x vector is now here, water, juice and lemonade, but it is 10, 20 and 30, right. Now let me try to do here something more. Suppose this is your here x and I try to change the value of this name. Suppose I give it uh, this is my 30 and suppose I change it. I try to interchange the values of here juice with water and value 10 with here juice. Right. So you can see here now this 
x becomes like this and now if I try to find out the value of juice, this comes out to be here 10. So, these are the different manipulations that you can do with the indexing. So, now let us come back to our slide and here is the outcome or the screenshot of the outcome. Now, one thing what you have to just uh, understand that uh, when we do not write anything inside the index, then what happens? That means, when an index is empty, let us try to see here. Suppose I try to generate a sequence of here 1 to 10 and that is assigned to a variable x. So, this is my vector values 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 10. So, I have two options to get these values either I simply write here x or I try to write down here x and inside this bracket there is no index, no value, but this is empty index. So, even then I will get the same values over here. And this is the screenshot, but let us try to see what happens on the R console. So, if I see here x 1 to here 10, you can see here x comes out to be here like this, but if I try to write down x in the format of an index, but I am not giving here any index, the, the entire sequence comes up. But in case if I try to give it here any value, see here 4 then you will see only the fourth value comes or if I try to do here something like combine fourth value and say seventh value and say ninth value, then you see here the three values comes over here. So, this is another thing which you have to keep in mind and now let us come back to our slides and try to understand something more. Here now I am going to be take a little bit diversion from whatever I was doing, but it is related to list as well as with uh, syntax. That we have understood that uh, list can be heterogeneous. What do you mean by heterogeneous? That means the entries inside the list can be of different modes. There can be a mixed modes, right. So, the question is that suppose I have got a list and suppose I want to create a matrix. You have to keep in mind one thing that I am not talking of a matrix that contains only the numerical values, but matrix here is something where I can enter the values which have got a particular and unique address. So, I want to create a matrix where there can be anything, some characters or say numbers. So, the question is once I have got a list, can I create a matrix? Answer is yes, but how? So, the steps are as follows. We can start with any heterogeneous list and then I have to mention the dimension of the matrix. And this will create a heterogeneous matrix and, and in case my list has mixed modes, then this matrix is going to be a mixture of numeric and character data. Let us try to take an example and try to understand what I am trying to say here. Suppose I try to create here a list by the name a, B and this list have two types of entries. One is numbers and another type is say character. So, I am taking here three numbers 1, 2, 3 and three characters x, y, z and this is a list. So, all together there are six values, three numbers and three characters. Now, I try to define what is the dimension of the matrix which I want. Since there are six values, 
the dimension of the matrix can be 2 by 3 or say 3 by 2. So, suppose I try to define the dimension of the matrix as see here 2 and 3 and they are combined with the operator C. So, this 2 is trying to define the number of rows and this 3 is trying to define the number of columns. So, now I am saying here that this list is now converted to something whose dimension are 2 by 3. And now, if I try to see what is the structure of AB, so I try to print my AB and we get here this type of thing. And you can see here that these values are arranged according to the values in the list from 1, 2, then 3, then here 4 and then here 5 and then here 6th value. So, the 1, 2, 3 and the 4, 5, 6 values which are here x, y and z. Let us try to do it over the R console and see what do we get over here. Suppose I try to create this list and then I try to give its dimension. and then I try to print here a b. You can see here this comes out to be like this. Now, suppose I change the dimension of a b as say 3 by 2 instead of 2 by 3. So, now if you try to print here a b once again you can see here that the values are arranged in the matrix of 3 by 2. Right, and the next slide is the screenshot of the outcome. So, now we stop here with this vector indexing and list and on the next turn we will try to take up some other issues. My request to all of you is that you try to take some example and try to practice it over the R console unless and until you type these commands yourself over the R console, try to play with the R software and try to see that how the outcomes are coming and are they really matching with what you thought. This will really enrich your knowledge. In order to write a good program, we have to understand what computer is doing, how our computer thinks. And once the thinking process or the th thinking steps of computer and our match, we can do a good programming. And whatever we have done up to now, these are very small ingredients of programming. This is just like if you want to cook uh, good food, there are different types of spices. So, you can cook a good food only when once you know the taste of each and every spice and that will give you a good dish. Similar is with the programming also. So, you learn how to cook a good dish. Till then, goodbye.